Hello everybody, my name is Lindsay McKenzie and for my family consultation slash book report um, I chose Raising a Daughter um, and I chose the book Queen Bees and Wannabes Helping Your Daughter Survive Clicks, Gossip, Boys, and the New Realities of Girl World. Um, I chose this book and this topic because um, one, I am a girl and I thought it would be interesting to kind of um, see what my parents went through as they were raising me, um, and I thought it would be a book that would keep me engaged um, and interested as I read it. So one of the main things, or one of the big things I was talked about in the book is insecurity. So that's kind of what I decided to base my family consultation off of. Um, and in the book, in chapter six, there's a chapter called The Mirror, um, and it kind of talks about how girls will girls and just people in general, but specifically girls, will always try and attempt to fit in to this standard of beauty. Um, and in some cases, it can be really detrimental to the growth of, you know, a child or a teenager as they're becoming who they are. So the family that I chose is a family of three, consisting of a mom, a dad, and the daughter. Uh, the daughter is 15 years old and she's having trouble with, as I said, overwhelming insecurities and it's causing anxiety and stress in other areas of her life. In the consultation um, that I'm theoretically having with her, talking with her, um, this is actually a quote from the book. Um, she says, when I go out in public, I have to put makeup on or else I feel like a complete trash bag walking down the street fourth grade was when it started my babysitter wore it all the time she was perfect so this is kind of an example of how we're surrounded by people who we feel less than and exemplify this um, sense of um, identity development that we want to have but feel like we can't achieve um, just because of you know insecurities that we have just within us like everybody does even if you're it doesn't matter how you identify or if you're a boy or a girl we all have insecurities in this girl's case um one thing that it talks about in the book that i think is important is to um, be honest with ourselves um to kind of talk with this girl and um be honest with her and talk to her about how we define femininity femininity and why we have to define it with such strict terms and why it can't be brought into, um, you know, an acceptance of all people who identify as women. So step one is to recognize the language and just the, um, the way people, you know, put themselves um, on social media. It's always going to be the best um, view of them. And then as well as advertisements, like that's going to be the best possible angles that will make people want to buy something um, and I think it's important to recognize that coded language as the book talks about um, and recognize that it can undermine you know a girl's sense worth especially as they're aging um, into adulthood or young adulthood um, and a quote from the book is we have to appreciate that this generation of girls is not only getting an unprecedented barrage of messaging about what the culture wants girls to look like, they are also given the forums for judging and being judged on how well they are conforming to this impossible idea on social media. And that is from Wiseman, the book that I'm re reading. So how does this challenge affect her and what is it affecting? So. Um, as I said earlier, it's causing anxiety and stress and it's making her feel like it's difficult to um, go on with just daily tasks in her life. So it's causing overwhelming dread, can't stop thinking about how others are perceiving her, stuck in her worries, difficulty focusing on class and too much anxiety and stress for a long period of time. And this can lead to depression. Um, the long-term low self-esteem can lead to um, eating disorders, and even drug abuse, um, which are all things that are obviously we don't want to happen later in her life. Um, but having this low self-esteem can eventually lead to those things, which is why we need to address them now when she, as she's 15 years old. 
So in another article that I read for this um, project, it is called Father-Daughter Relationships by Linda Nielsen. Um, she talks about confirmation bias um, and insecurity. And I thought this was interesting because confirmation bias is when we look for evidence that confirms what we already believe to be true. And I think often when we think of com confirmation bias, um, it's not in the relation to insecurities. But I really think that um, through the research that I've done that it can be very relatable to insecurity mostly because um, if this girl is feeling insecure she might be seeing the ads on social media the girls on social media her friends who are posting the best angles on them of themselves um she may be seeing these and it's confirming her feelings of insecurity and um her feelings of l being less than uh compared to all these people that are showing the best version of themselves when we all know that they don't look like that 100% of the time. But these views are just confirming her bias on herself. So the biological theory of development is a theory that is in our book, um, our class text, um, and it suggests that ecology and environments we encounter in everyday life affect our development. Um, and this theory, I feel like, is really applicable to this 15-year-old girl that I'm consulting because um, it suggests that her interactions with symbols and objects, i.e. the ads and people she's seeing um, that set unrealistic, re unrealistic expectations on social media and just um, walking down the street even, as she said, um, affects her development. Um, and it affects how she sees herself, her self-esteem, um, and the insecurities that she's having simply just by living in her everyday life. So the goal of the consultation is to figure out ways to, you know, live her everyday life, go through her ecology and her environment without feeling those overwhelming insecurities and low self-esteem. So possible solutions. So one is help her practice self-approval. Um, I think it's important, as I said earlier, to like notice the coded language that people speak and make sure that, you know, we, we kind of reinforce how we feel about ourselves um, when we hear this coded language and recognize that even though people are saying one thing about how a body should look, we know that that is not how all bodies look and that it's language that is causing insecurities in people other than just herself. One way that the parents can help with practicing self-approval is by, you know, noticing how she feels when she, you know, doesn't have makeup on and isn't looking perfect like she said she wants to feel all the time um, so that she doesn't feel like a trash bag in quotations, as she said. Um you know, the parents can kind of like ask her specific questions to kind of validate, you know, her, her feeling secure with who she is and what she looks like. Another way that her parents or people around her can help her feel more secure by practicing self-approval um, is by recognizing pieces of herself that aren't purely um, looks and uh, appearance and maybe, you know, practicing self-approval on you know something good she's done for somebody else or an achievement that she got in athletics or an achievement that she got in school um, and just recognizing that those are also really cool things and they have nothing to do with the way she, that she looks another way that you could do this um, or a possible solution would be addressing these insecurities with a therapist um, you know if the parents can't seem to get to her and connect with her um one way would be to kind of look for an outside source it can be good to get you know kind of like a second opinion almost um and talking to a therapist about her insecurities and finding ways for her therapist to help her kind of have these um self-actualization um practices and like making sure that she knows that her appearance is not the only thing that matters in her life there's so many other things that she does and can do that um, has nothing to do with her appearance 
Another solution would be simply a detox from social media. As most of us know, social media is filled with unrealistic expectations. Um, and as I said earlier, it's just a bunch of people most of the time posting things that um, accentuate their best features, essentially. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, if you have overwhelming insecurity like this girl describes, um, having a detox from social media might be helpful in recognizing all the wonderful things about herself instead of trying to change her the way she looks and who she is by um with the you know the hope of fitting into how these people on social media look and finally the last solution is discuss things that make her feel secure with her appearance so i kind of talked about this already but kind of discussing other aspects of herself that she feels really secure about and really excited about um, and kind of emphasizing those things over just how she looks because while how you look can't, can be important to you and there's nothing wrong with that, it's important not to let it overtake your life like this girl is letting um, herself do but, uh, with these overwhelming insecurities and um, stress. So coming up with ways that help her notice how amazing she is um, in other aspects of her life can be really helpful in lowering her anxiety when she's walking down the street without makeup on or a perfect outfit on. And finally, here are my references, the class text, um, the article called father-daughter relationships and then queen bees and wannabes the book that i chose to base the whole presentation and paper off of